one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Test one. Test. Hello. You're up. Shout out. Sorry, we're having some mic issues. Right. A new camera and the mic uh, isn't working, so I'm patching old lapel mic. We're getting there. So it's uh, just a matter of time before we get all the kinks worked out. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I've got some stuff on the workbench that I think makes it go from here. So if you're out there, come on. So, in front of me, I've got several items. Um, I've got miniatures and, hold on a minute, guys. I'm going to switch over back to uh, the other camera that has a mic that works. Give me two quick seconds.
everybody. How are you today? Can you hear me now? back. We'll see if that works any better. Whoa, got to turn the gain down. Okay, adjusted the gain. All right, perfect. Okay, here we go, guys. So what we're going to work on is um, some different things from Radio Dish Task Skirmish Sanjin. Uh, this is from one of their Kickstarters. And I also have some vehicles from Spectre Miniatures, the Razors. And then I also have uh, from Tabletop Tactical Simulations, which is... Uh, kind of like an offshoot or a separate company of Miniature Building Authority. So we'll go through all this stuff and we'll see what we want to work on at this point in time. Okay. So let's start with the uh, vehicles. Oh, before I get started, let's take a wrap up of some of the painting I did last uh, week on the uh, Present Arms with the woodland camo for the, let me see if I can get them inside here, for the Special Artisan Service Miniatures, uh, the SOCR boat crew. As you can see there, look, came out pretty good. Nice woodland camo. Not too bad. So that's that guy. And this is the one I was showing on the camera, you can see on the one the one previously that uh, the flesh still needs to be done and everything. Um, and I still have some finer details, but as you can see, the new one looks pretty darn good. So, uh, yeah, I would definitely take a look at these guys for, for this kit. Here is the boat. Bring the boat into the frame here for you so you can look at that. pretty nice um, I still got to do some highlighting on the edges I did some edging but it's not really terribly noticeable you can see some here and there um, I'm gonna go another lighter shade um, just to bring out the edges a little bit but all in all I think it's a pretty nice model so if we take this guy I'm gonna break him off this it was temporarily glued on there and he'll go just like that How's that look? I think that looks pretty darn good myself. So, or, you know, we can put him on the minigun. Here. But I have his arms stay situated so he can uh, take care of operating the watercraft. So, I think it looks pretty good. Not too bad at all. Well, welcome, Skoback. Glad to have you join us tonight. I know this is kind of a last-minute show, and I promise we'll get all the kinks worked out, and we'll uh, get it all to the point where it is amazing. And you will enjoy the, sh the future episodes, I promise you. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at 
Some Radio Dish Dash Skirmish Sanjin. Uh, I believe these are from the Day of the Rangers. They're a Mogadishu Kickstarter. I got some, uh, see this is a 50 cal Humvee. And this is a, I believe that's a 50 cal as well. I have another Humvee sitting around here I've been working on. Got a Technical, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I've got some, well, let's just call them the bad guys. Uh, these are your Som Somalis. Um, or, you know, oh, look at that. He's got a 50 cal right there. So I got some Somalis. And then I've got some extra parts for, uh, look at that. You got wheels and tires and the axles. Now, that's a pretty hefty axle. Um, and I've got some Rangers here. And I've got a gunner to go in the turret of the Humvee here. So let's break them out because it's hard to see in the plastic. So let's work on, I'll take one of these out here. Let me grab a knife here. Oh, before I forget, we are giving away a set of paint brushes from Games and Gears. An Adepticon set right here. This is a master set. So whoever we announce on this coming Friday's podcast gets to win a Games and Gears Adepticon Masters 15 set. And in the set, you'll get three brushes, a zero, a zero, zero, and a triple zero. And I'll show you what the brushes look like here. So they're metal. They seal up. And I don't know how well we can see that. But that is the triple zero. And then it, to protect it, it goes inside its own handle. And then you have the zero, zero. Right there. Sorry if you're, I gotta work on getting these in frame better. So I'm trying to do this off two different laptops at the time. We're just gonna have to reset up this, this studio a little bit. But let me do, I'll show you all three tips here. I'll get them in the right order. Off. So there you go. Zero, double zero, triple zero. Hope you all can see those. Not too bad. Helps if I turn this screen so I can see what I'm doing. There, now I can see. You'd think I will have never done this before, which is not true. Um, but it's a new setup and just a new way of doing things. So, so whoever the winner is for the hundredth uh, followers on YouTube is going to win themselves a set of Games and Gears Adepticon Masters 15 set, and it comes in this really nice carrying case as well. Um, as you can see, I like there's paintbrushes. This is just a few of the sets I have. So this set here is going to be some lucky winner's set. Put it right back in the box. So make sure you pay attention to this Friday's so you can win a Games and Gear set. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and open this baby up here. I'm grab a hobby knife. Oh, I really chipped the tip knob off that baby. All right. I'm going to have to put a new blade on there. So, Colin, if you're watching, or if you watch this later, I apologize that I haven't gotten to these sooner. I get so busy and wrapped up in so many projects, other things just kind of shift off. And uh, I lose track on things. So, I apologize for that. All right, so here we go. This is a resin. And it looks like they kind of did like a primer on it. We're going to reprime it, obviously, uh, using airbrush. Which, as a matter of fact, I've got two airbrushes coming in from Badger Airbrush um, because they had a 55-year birthday not too long ago. And you could buy any of their airbrushes for $55. All of them. 
no matter which one. So this is 28 millimeter scale. And let's put oh, that's for the, what did I just do with it? Well, I tell you what, I'd lose my own head if it wasn't attached to these guys. Okay. And we'll do this. I'm going to adjust the camera here a little bit because I seem to be working more here than there. Okay. So we have these axles that go right in here. And just going to make sure that's clean. Grab my glue. And here, and again, I'm going to try and adjust the camera a little bit. Sorry for shaking. There we go. Mucho better. I'm going to move the mic out of the way so you don't really see it. There, now we can see the workbench. Much better. Okay. Let's go ahead and assemble one of these. Lay down a bead of super glue here. Clean the tip. So don't do what I do. If you want to make sure if you can smell the glue, don't sniff the glue. Please don't sniff the glue. So I tell my kids, do as I say, not as I do. Oh, I need to put a new tip on there. So I do order extra tips for the glue. Because they get gunked up pretty easily these days. And I'm not sure as to why, since I keep my bottle upright. Well, my tip is really gunked up. All right, let's see now. No, it's still liquid. I had a bottle of um, glue dry out on me, which I don't understand how that happened, but it did. I had it laying on it. It got. It fell over, and for some time, it was. All right. I smell some glue. Before I totally cut off, I'm going to replace it. So you can buy these off of Amazon for next to nothing. The label on here says uh, extra caps, 75 cents each. Obviously, I did not pay 75 cents each for them. So. Can you hear me now, Sobek? Um, when I did an audio test, let me, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, I just put on headphones. I can hear myself. Or if you're still having problems, I can turn up the gain a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm going to just notch that a little bit. There it goes. There it goes. Pound that down a little bit. Wow, that stuck right away. Whether I wanted it to or not, it's in. All right. So, okay. All right, let me know if you can hear me now. I can hear myself. Um, I'm logged in under St. Vitus Dance RN on my other laptop, so I can see what you guys are seeing and what you're hearing. I hear sound. If you're not hearing it, let me know, and I will switch to a different camera. Uh, I have a uh, webcam sitting here as well. Okay, those are already fixed and tight, so we're going to put our wheels on. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning here. 
What kind of projects are you guys working on? Let me know in the comments. Um, we will check the comments quite regularly. Oh, that fits really nice. All right, put some glue on there. Oh, a little too much. Easy with the glue there, crazy. How do I get glue on my fingers? Oh, doggone it. Well, let's dry now. That's how you get glue on your fingers. Well, it fit perfectly the first time. Gonna cheat. I left my Dremel downstairs. I like to use a Dremel to clean out things. You gotta be very careful with it. Obviously you don't wanna uh, damage your minis or models. So I'm gonna just widen it out a little bit. Make it a little easier for everybody to see. Cause I think I have it in too close. So And get this and make sure you always dry fit first sorry guys I know I should come over my shoulder a little bit more I think I'm going to you guys are helping me out with uh, research here on best cameras angles here so I'm gonna bring it up so I don't block you out with my hand bring this down there Mucho better. Now you can see what I'm doing. I get this part on here. Okay. Throw a little bit of glue. Just a drop. It doesn't take much. Okay. Is kind of goofy. Hmm. I probably needed it to be flushed out a little bit. You know what, though? I can work with that. See here? The axle's not sitting perfectly flat, but I can work with that. I will work with that. I have ideas. Boy, the tolerance level is pretty tight. Okay. Got that. So I got those wheels on. I'm going to go ahead and do this one okay well, that one went on really easy uh, all right Ever the perfection, well, I'm not going to claim myself to be a perfectionist, but I do like things to reasonably sit well. Right. 
hole's not even. Let's see if I can shave this out a little bit. Make sure you invest in a good hobby. This is an X-Acto knife, but I don't know. Sometimes the blades just come loose when you're holding on to it, you know? All right, let's see if that works better. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. All right. A little bit more... Dab of blue. So I'm going to spray this because I want this to stick. Nothing like spraying your hands. You ever wonder what's in that stuff? If, um, if I spray a lot on myself a lot, and, uh, Well, there's a nut ring we don't hear too often. That's the studio phone. And somebody's trying to call us. I'll have to call him back. All right. So this is the the turret, the cupola, if you will. And uh, yeah, Gotta just clean up some edges. So you got the hatch. Got to clean up some edges. So obviously this is not an up. Oh, it looks like it. It's not a true. It's not an up armored Humvee. This is from 1993 era. So Mogadishu. There weren't up armored at that time. It was just standard uh, aluminum side. Um. If you've never been in a Humvee, they're noisy buggers. That engine, God almighty. We drove them from Chicago. No, I flew from Chicago. We, from Indiana. And, um, down to Camp Atterbury. Uh, that's where the National Guard and Indiana uh, do their weekend drills. That's where their ranges are and all that. And that was a very long ride. They're not exceedingly fast either. At least highway standards. So, all right. Dab a little bit of glue on the edge. Now skosh. Gotta be careful I don't push it down too hard and break the wheels. So. Okay. So there is that. That Humvee. We can put the crew member on if we want. Mount. Let me see how they got this mount to fit in here. I guess it goes that way. Oh, ooh, this is not a 50 cal. This happens to be my favorite weapon that I ever had the honor and privilege to use. And I used to run the range on this weapon. This is the Mark 19. What is a Mark 19, you might ask? Well, the Mark 19 uh, is an automatic grenade launcher. 40 millimeter. Same one uh, grenades that are used on the undermount M203 on your M16, M4 carbine. Um, 
so but that's is an M4 and it is amazing you can thump 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 all day long it's the most satisfying sound thump 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 Gonna put a dab of glue right here. It's very fragile. Mount. This is my only concern about models like this is for gaming per se, is that some of the mounts and things are so fragile that the slightest bump and they'll come right off. So a lot of times what I end up doing is I will cut that off. I'll cut the knob off and just make it flush. There we go. Okay, so I can hear somebody yelling in the background. Um, and that being, you didn't wash your model. You're right. I'm terrible about doing that. So again, do as I say, don't do as I do. You know, some people are like, well, what do you mean wash your models? Well, Miniatures, because they have releasing agents and other chemicals from manufacturing pro pro process, you need to get it off. So glue sticks and paint sticks, um, that kind of thing. If you scuff up the bottom, it helps create ridges and places for the glue to stick. All right, so basically we've got to put a little bit of dab of glue here and I'm going to put a dab of glue here. I'm going to put this guy in here because his hands are actually on the weapon and you're lining, lining, lining up his arms to fit his hands. If I can get them to all mate, oh, come on. I'd be a happy camper. Okay, we're going to have to do a little bit of thin. Where's my thin glue? Oh, I don't see it. Oh, lovely. So, Super glue or modeling glue or whatever they call this, cyanocrylate, comes in different viscosities. And there's a very thin viscosity. Um, that flows really nice in the seams. And I like to use that, especially when I'm doing. Boom, there it is. Look at that. That looks all right. That looks all right. So that is a Humvee from Skirmish Sanjin, Radio Dish Dash, or Dish Dash Publishing, I think they've changed their name to these days. Uh, 28 millimeter resin kit with um, white metal parts. This one is a Mark 19 with a trooper on the top. And we're going to just clean up some of this excess quick dry agent. Uh, 
because we're going to paint him. So what color should we paint him? Um, you know, you can go with many different colors. We could go with desert, sand. We could go murdock, um, you know, traditional um, of the late 80s to mid 90s um, before they started making everything sand colored. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. So let's look at scale wise while I've got some different ones out here. So this is Skirmish Engines 28. I will pick out. A special artisan's miniature here. It looks a little smaller. Let me see if I can pull uh, one of their other guys here. Let's look at them. So, speaking of which, I have spare a little bit. Got a Ranger with an M16A2 and an M203 grenade under grenade launcher. Um, he's wearing a gr Grenadier's Vest. That's what this is right here. A Grenadier's Vest. M16A2, M203. This would have been typical garb for a quick reaction. Um, from that era and let's put him next to him so this is special artisan miniatures this is skirmish sanjin i do have also some u.s infantry modern from Tabletop simulations. And here's another guy with. These are a little bit more modern because he's got uh, a camelback, and so these are more up to closer to now. Except it looks like he's wearing an LBE, or is it a vest? It's hard to tell on that pose. Let's see if I can find another one. Okay, here's one. All right, so obviously we got to remove excerpt lead but yeah, let's see my clippers handy probably not so pretty close looks like tabletops are a little bit bigger dimension wise looks a little beefier if you will and then these look closer in, in scale if you will yeah okay so how do these stack up against specter um where's my specters specter guys specter guys where are you specter guys i have them hidden somewhere don't remember what i did with them i have deltas from skirmish uh, Spectre. Spectre, Spectre, Spectre. Ah, Spectre. Sorry for going off camera there, but I wanted to get a Spectre. <clears throat> All right, so here's a Spectre SAS. Right here. Jungle, uh, these are the from the Jungle SAS uh, set. So obviously he's been based a little bit, camoed up. You can see that he's carrying a couple different weapon weapon options there. These are really nice miniatures. They're all nice miniatures in their own right. So Spectre compared to SASM, which I think is changing their name to War Banner, if I'm not mistaken, because I know they kind of merged or they're partnering up. So I think they might be starting to fall under the War Banner. Here is. Spectre and Radio Dish Dash Skirmer Sanjin. And here is Tabletop Simulations. I'm trying to make them so. 
It's still a little beefier, I think, here. But these are all 20 mil, or 28 mil, excuse me. Nicely detailed. I really like these SAS guys. I think they painted up really nice. Um, I went with very muted colors on them. Oh, darn it. Sorry, Steven, if you're watching. Matt. Um, the premise behind it was if you're in the jungle, the jungle is pretty humid and typically wet. And um, so it's, that's why I muted the colors. Like you're, you're going through the bush and, you know, everything's kind of muted because it's damp. So that's why I went with that. My plan with these guys was to do a scenario of um, Belize and showing them taking out a drug lab uh, in Belize, um, which is funneling funds to a terrorist group um, because the SAS do a lot of their jungle training, in, uh, among other places, in Belize. Um, so... I thought it was really cool to paint those guys up and do a scenario with them. Um, you know, we've got the SOCR guys here, which I think are going to look really great in that boat. They can actually do inner cooperative if I wanted to. Um, you know, they could be the ones to extract the guys. Um, you know, I got some Humvees. I actually have razors as well from Spectre here. I wanted to pull those out. There's a lot of parts. A lot of parts. I even, and Steven's a cool guy because when I got these from UK Games Expo a couple years ago, um, I got here, let's take them up. So I got the crew here. And they look really good. All right, I know. I keep doing this to you guys. I apologize. Let me move this off for a minute. So many parts. This is part of the problem. I've been a little intimidated by the amount of parts that there are in this. I mean, you got weapons, you got seats, steering wheel, um, you got the brush guards, the roll cage, it's all in there. And then you got the main chassis, and then you've got more stowage, it looks like. Or and just part look, you've got the tra the uh, suspension here. All the suspension. That looks like the engine. Right there. That's the engine. And then you have the main body itself, which is in resin. So you have the main body in resin, which attaches. It'll attach like this. Let's take that. Off there, you can see it where the tabs would slide in once it's cleaned up, just like that. Wheels will go on with the suspension, your crew will go in there, and you'll have these racing through wherever you know. It's amazing the toys that uh, special operations guys get these days. I, I can tell you a true story. This is not an exaggeration by any means. I would swear to it in a court of law. When I was at Fort Bragg in the middle 80s, I was getting up for the morning. Uh, we first call, I want to say it was 620. Uh, was it 620? Six, no, 520. Sorry, guys. 520, we had to be out at um, in formation at 6. And we did PT till a roughly 7-ish. Then we got dressed in our uniforms. We went to chow, and then we went to our daily activities. So I had gotten back from PT, and I was in my room, and I had the TV on um, with the news on, the morning news. And they were talking about things at Fort Bragg. And one of the things that 
um, was said was they were talking about Delta Force. You know, this was mid '80s, and Chuck Norris's movie had come out, and there were some other goofy movies that had come out. You know, all about Delta Force, right? And all this stuff. And somebody from the military said, "I cannot confirm or deny, but Delta Force, you know, doesn't exist." Which is funny because at that exact moment, as I look out my window of my barracks, coming down Ardennes Boulevard, was these dune buggies. And it was about four or five of them. I mean, you know, it, it was kind of, I want to say it was fall, winter, so it was still kind of dark out. It was just getting light. And everybody was all blacked out. Uh, uniforms were blacked out. The dune buggies were all blacked out. You know, guys were armed f to the teeth. And you knew exactly who they were. They, it was Delta. Um, you know, they're not Delta Force. They're Delta Detachment or operate, you know, Operational Detachment Delta. Um, those, I had a uh, coworker at my unit um, who went to Delta. He tried out. I don't know if he ever succeeded or not because he never came back. So you would assume he made it. Um, he could have not made it. It's a very tough selection because he was former SF. Um, he was our s section, he was our platoon sergeant, I think it was. I'm trying to remember that so long ago now. But um, he was former SF, and for whatever reason, at that time, they didn't have a high operation tempo like they do now. So he was just assigned to the 82nd, and um, he wanted to go to... Delta, so he went and did uh, their eval or qualifications, whatever it is, and I don't know whatever happened to him. Um, but they do do exist, not like Chuck Norris or some of those other movies, you know. And they're not the end all be all. Um, so you know, there's a lot of interesting things about that. They are definitely their own breed, and they do live by their own set of rules, if you will. But they're very highly professional soldiers. They are professional. They do a lot of things you would not believe. So, yeah. Um, I'll work. continue working on these guys. I'll get them assembled. I appreciate your patience as we work on this. Um, I know that eventually we'll get this camera and sound all sort straightened out so it sounds okay for you guys. Um we have had a major snowstorm here in the Midwest of the United States, and that kind of screwed the stuff. I've been out trying to shovel all day and uh, caught, caught up with that and forgot to get this all coming in. So, you guys, I appreciate everything you do. Make sure you catch up with our regular podcast, which will come out this Friday. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff in the podcast. Uh, we It was just Jim and I because Ralph is off researching for the Ghost Ops RPG, and Chris um, was doing some projects of his own. So we'll all get back together because we're going to start um, breaking down rule sets. Uh, we did a very brief overview of a two-page rule set from Empress, uh, Danger Close. Um, very simple rule set. It's a beer and pretzels type, you know, you could put together. Um, I think it's now free to download off their site. Don't quote me on that. I haven't checked in a while. I actually bought it when it first came out, so I um, haven't really had a chance to play it. So this gives us an excuse to start playing some more games because we're going to do some CQB. That's the title of our show, quote, Close Quarter Battles, which is our Let's Plays. And then we're going to do some reviews and unboxings, and that's going to be under the title of our show, Breach and Clear. And then Jim has his own show where he takes uh, anything historical from post-World War II, so 1946 on, breaks it down and gives you guys ideas and scenarios and how you can transform that into an awesome modern miniature or board game or um, any type of modern gaming in modern warfare. He does it more on the operational level, and that show is going to be called Op Center. Um, Chris... And I typically take on the skirmish level, um, but we do all scales. So it's not just 28 mil, it's 20 mil, it's 15, 10, 6. I've even done some 3 mil um, miniatures as well. I was seeing if they were on my workbench still. I don't think they are. Um, but I've done some 3 mil armor, and those are from Pico Armor. 
I've also done, uh, we do some 3D printing. We're going to do some terrain workshops. But this is a piece I made from uh, a 3D printing file. And it's pretty solid. It's a, it's a rock. I set the settings wrong, so it's 100% infill, which means it's totally solid. And so you don't have to do that. And I painted it up. Um, and we use this as an objective marker. Obviously, it's a Blackhawk. Um, if you can't tell. So we got a lot of stuff in the projects. Stay tuned. We are going to announce our two winners. Uh, the one winner is for the Games and Gears paintbrush for the 100th plus subscriber to the YouTube channel. And then we have a set of Skirmish Sanjin rules to give away for uh, the winner of the 100 plus Facebook members. So very exciting stuff. And then we're going to be asking for um, people who are interested in joining the gaming group for Ghost Ops. Um, Ralph will be putting out more information on that in some time soon. And until the next time, you guys keep on hobbying, keep your heads down, roll those high sixes, and watch your ammo. And we will see you guys later.